Emmanuel Daniel is president and chief executive of the Asian banker in Singapore, and he joins me now. Hey, uh, Emmanuel Daniel, thank you very much indeed for joining us. What do you make of what's going on here, and how come they made such a mess of all this? Well, uh, on the face of it, it may come across as a personality dispute, but actually HSBC is um, undergoing a very tr fundamental transformation. Um, they did experiment with new people in, on the board, and I think if you remember, there was um, John Taunton that they brought in uh, earlier as a potential um, you know, sub uh, future chairman and so on. And I think that um, people who have been in HSBC for the longest time, people like Gagan, uh, expected to uh, rise up the ranks uh, as a matter of course, and that's been the old HSBC. Um, but uh, the moment they started experimenting with new members of the board, uh, expectations started to change with, uh, with different people. Um, the, the other point is actually the, um, the pressure that shareholders have been putting on HSBC, uh, um, wanting to make sure that it is not a given that the CEO becomes the chairman, it's not a given that um, the commercial banking head becomes the CEO and the chairman, and so on. And, and the third uh, driving uh, mechanism here was the fact that in the last two years, it's been the investment bankers, the treasury people who've been bringing, you know, bringing in the bacon, uh, building the bank and, um, you know, riding the, uh, the, 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 the economic recovery. So um, the guys who've been holding the fort on, on, the, on that front uh, expect to see greater recognition of their work. So I think that uh, it's all of these elements that we're seeing uh, being played out. Yeah, Emmanuel. And I think that, uh, yes. Yeah, you know, but it doesn't yes. send the message that, you know, HSBC is always renowned for of being, well, prudent and organized, does it, briefly? Well, um, ch times have changed. Uh, the prudent and organized organization has to respond to new challenges. And the commercial banking uh, aspect of the business, the, the, the business that uh, uh, Gagan represented, is no longer the, at the forefront of, uh, of the decisions that they have to make at, in, at the board level. And I think that's what's being represented right now. Uh, with Gulliver being uh, uh, promoted to CEO, um, what, what the message you're getting right now is that the guys who are running the investment banking, the corporate banking front, are going to come to the front and um, uh, you will see a lot of policy changes on that front. Specifically, what sort of policy changes are we talking about? HSBC has been always the prudent uh, domestic bank in many different markets. Uh, I think uh, right now um, the bank is going to start looking at the investment corporate banking side of its business um, and trying to start making sense of it. I think if you remember the last three years, they've been trying to hire um, you know, very expensive uh, people who are not traditionally HSBC types to come in uh, and, and kickstart the investment banking business. And I think that um, you will see that with the, with the people that they have in place now, there will be more initiative on that front. And uh, the um, organic commercial banking business will probably take a back seat in a way. In a way, that's the stable part of the business. Uh, uh, that's the bread and butter type of part of the business. Uh, it's the investors and the, share, the key shareholders that want to see, you know, better returns, good dividends coming back online and so, so on. So the bank is under some, some, some sort of pressure in that way. Emmanuel, so do you see, again, you know, investment banking taking up a big chunk of the business, but do you get, see that getting even bigger now, given who's going to be chief executive? That's correct. Uh, in fact, the new chief executive, um, uh, you know, came up on that track, and he's got a whole line of uh, uh, middle and senior managers that he needs to put in place. Uh, and in fact, I, I actually see that to some extent, um, some of the commercial banking businesses will have changes in, in terms of heads uh, at the country level, at the business line level, uh, and it will be, you know, taken up by people who are not necessarily commercial bankers in that sense. Now, what remains to be seen is HSBC's ability to hire from outside the organization. I think there will be some attempts on that front. Uh, there have been some botched attempts in the past. Um, I think they will be much clearer in terms of what they want to do to take on talent from, you know, the American investment banks, for example. Right. Stuart Gulliver, of course, the man in focus here. L I've read a lot of warm words about him. What do you know about him as a man and as a banker as well? 
Well, he rose up the ranks. He, he's also very much a, a soldier, a party line man, uh, just like uh, Gagan was. But Gagan was on the commercial banking front and Stuart was on the... Um, uh, on the investment banking front, and Stuart was very close to Stephen Green, uh, and I think that um, the the board essentially was making a choice as to um, you know who will be the better man to deal with some of the issues coming on stream right now, and I think that uh, the choice of Stuart. Uh, already indicates uh, the priority the board has, is setting for itself. Uh, and also, Stuart was uh, perhaps closer to London. I think Gagan was running around around the world, um, you know, uh, and he loved the nuts and bolts of the business. But uh, really, today, it's looking after the key clients, um, looking at the big numbers, uh, and making sure that, um, you know, that, that the delivery on the profitability side is uh, much stronger, uh, much more robust than, than an org organic business will provide. Emmanuel, Emmanuel Daniel, thank you very much indeed. He's the chief executive and president of uh, the Asia Bank. I've got to take